Hi, Sagittarius, and welcome to your weekly tarot reading for the week of December. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing really, really well. This reading is for any sun, moon, or rising Sagittarius sign. We will take a look at the cards. We'll get a sense of the awareness for the week, guidance, and possible outcomes. I will also choose a couple of oracle cards for additional information. And, you know, this... This weekly reading is a way to capture the energies and messages for you to help out in some way. So let's just go ahead and get started with your reading. Okay, so we have the Lovers, Major Arcana. We have the Two of Wands. And we have the Four of Pentacles. So the Lovers, this is a beautiful illustration and you see the angel above, but you really get a sense of the fire and the passion and the high energy, the flames, the flame orangey color. And here, uh, the couples in the water, eye to eye. So when we have the lovers, we're thinking about our important relationships, our significant relationships, the ones that truly have meaning to us and you know where we, where we devote a fair amount of our time to the relationship. So often with lovers, it can be the romantic love where you're seeing someone, where you're truly involved, you're married. And, uh, you know, it, it's the dynamic of knowing each other, getting to know each other, building on that. So if you're single, you know, you're perhaps hoping to find this lover relationship or a relationship that is significant to you and maybe what your heart is calling out for is a dear friend, a companion, um, some type of connection where you're meeting of the mind. And so with this lovers here, we have, um, it can be in many cases desire and not only the physical desire for the romantic lovers, but the desire to be together because when you are together, you're very strong, there's a union, there's connection. And so the lovers can suggest the possibility of a long-term relationship. And again, as we begin to connect with someone, as we begin to get to know them, it takes time to understand them. It takes time to find shared ideas, shared beliefs, you know, common goals or dreams. And so sometimes along the line, you have to make decisions. Maybe you're finding that who you're with isn't quite uh, what you were hoping for or that something doesn't maybe feel right. For some, it's, you know, it's getting deeper and stronger. And that can lead to a committed relationship. It could lead to decisions that affect your future. Will you get engaged? Will you live together? Will you consider marriage? and a family. So the lovers goes to all relationships that are significant to us, that for whatever reasons we find each other and we are, I would say we're illuminated and enlightened by the presence of this other person. And along the journey of the lovers, you know, the possibility is always there. And as you begin to build intimacy, as you get to know someone, that defines the perhaps the future of the relationship, the longevity. So it's always nice to see the lovers here in whatever context is right for you. For those that are married, you know, it's deepening the bond. You can never stop learning about your partner. You continue to learn and to grow together. So here with the two of wands, we have this similar color scheme with this illustration of the woman looking out between the two portals, out into the distance, the mountains, the water, the lands. And it's the, again, thinking forward, thinking of what's next. Where am I headed to next? Is it regarding this relationship? Do my, is this relationship a part of my plan? What am I thinking about? Is this going to be my thinking of marriage? Am I thinking about commitment, travel, a different location, building a life together? So the two of wands, it's about 
vision. It's about making choices that, um, you know, that you have to consider for your dreams, for these early stages of manifesting, of wanting to build something, of wanting to do something. Again, with wands, we're talking about our passions. We're talking about the things that bring us to life, that make us feel whole and happy and fulfilled and purposeful because we're tapping into those passions and to, again, the part of life that excites us. So here we have the two of wands, the vision, and then the decisions that we're thinking behind it, which is, uh, you know, hmm, if, I, if, if we do this together, then what's going to change or what do we need to do or what's going to happen? It's this initial bubbling stage of ideas and movement and planning. It's what you see. It's what you visualize. More than likely, it's perhaps involving an important relationship to you. So then we have the four of pentacles. We see the, the woman here in the beautiful green fields with her little treasure box of coins. And she's got the key here and she's going to protect those coins. Um, with the four of pentacles, we get a real sense of holding on and being mindful of what we have, maybe not opening up. And so for some of you, maybe in a relationship, you're holding on to what you have emotionally, or perhaps you're holding on to your resources too, or you're just, this could be maybe something that needs to be thought, thought about or considered in the context of the relationship. This woman here, solo, she has her riches in front of her, and she's got them under lock and key. And she has her eyes right on them. So she's in this holding status quo um, place. Time will tell. Again, everyone moves along their own pace. And that sometimes within our life, we have to uh, you know, we have to hold on and to, to watch what we have, whether it's our emotions, whether it's our time, our energies, our money, property, you know, sometimes we just stay put and we kind of stop and we just, maybe we're not making any impulsive decisions. Maybe we're not doing anything too rash. There may be a better time. There may be a better time to start to open up and to release and to maybe feel a little more um, open into sharing and giving. So, you know, I always see the Four of Pentacles as holding on, being very careful about what you have, creating your own boundaries, your own sense of control here. So if we look at this reading... We are seeing the ideas of manifesting and a vision. We're seeing a significant relationship that's in the mix. Whether it's romantic or whether it's platonic, it's important to you. And then we're seeing this energy of holding on, of holding back, of staying put perhaps and not making any rash decisions at this time. There's always potential here, you know, this could lead to something else later on. But for right now, it's I'm in holding mode. And I'm not quite ready yet to, you know, open up the channels. So interesting uh, cards today. Let's take a look at what we have in terms of numerology. We have uh, six and two is eight. Eight and four is 12 and 12 reduces to three and three is about group activities. It's about expression and communication. So if we're thinking in terms of numerology and we're thinking in terms of communication, you know, sometimes this four of pentacles, if we're thinking about the idea of holding on, that maybe we're really holding on to some things within and maybe in terms of communication. Successful relationships take all the spokes on the wheel to be working harmoniously. You know, communication, um, being direct, being honest, allowing the attraction to pull you together. So many things. And, you know, it's 
it takes a lot of energy to make relationships work. So let's see what we have in terms of an affirmation for the day. Intuitive nudges. Intu intuition is the language of the soul. We are all born aware with a profound sense of inner knowing. Intuition is one of the greatest gifts we possess, which keeps us connected to our higher selves, the universe, and to our divine spirit. And that's like, can I get an amen? Because that's what it's uh, to trust your intuition, to listen to your inner guide, to put stock into what you're feeling and make it credible in your life is a very powerful practice and process. And I was just talking to a dear friend about the importance of trusting your intuition and allowing it to flourish, allowing it to be present and to not squish it down, but to, you know, really make it an important part of how you approach life is to think about how you feel about situations intuitively. People, situations, trust your gut. You know, trust your inner self. So friends, this is what I have for the day. I hope that you found something here with this reading and what I see. And if you did, please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video, share this video, comment below. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.